came out of my patio just doing a little photography. I'm literally sitting on boards. Can you see them poking from there? I found some boards on a it's like some cedar, untreated cedar boards on a secondhand app that we have called Virage Sale. And um, I've been primarily using those and uh, a rugged old worn down Ikea table to do most of my pictures. Because, you know, not all of us live in super fancy aesthetic environments and that's okay. You can work with what you got in order to take beautiful pictures. So I just thought I would turn on the camera just to show you. I mean, this is our, our balcony space here. And uh, yeah, I'm doing some knitting on my boards. So you just gotta work with what you have. I used to really be intimidated by taking nice knitting shots. It felt like it was an additional step to a process. It didn't really get me anywhere closer to having a finished object. But now I'm learning to take a lot more joy in it and it's felt much more exciting. And I've just tried to get creative with it, right? Like work with what I have. I've gone to the thrift store find sometimes little baskets and props like that but otherwise I've tried to keep it natural you know using props from nature and just being a little innovative with you know, all of those interesting shapes that are out there in nature so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to rip this <laughs> so I one of the things I've been trying to figure out how to do is use up as much of this yarn as possible because it's one of the things with hands on. Just want to use up every bit of it. That's how I feel anyway. So I think what I did is I made this too big. So the decrease section on this shawl is going to be, it's too long. I'm not going to be able to get it. The yarn that I have left, I really don't think so. The other ball is all I have left of the two. I'm, just not, I'm thinking it's not going to happen, so I'm going to have to rip back this entire mosaic section as well. Which I'm okay with because it, actually I'm not really happy with how the center came out on this one. I just lost focus, I think, and wasn't thinking about what I was doing, so I'd like to go back and tidy that up a bit anyway. And you know, with these yarns I haven't felt that mournful about ripping them out. The last shawl I did I ripped out a bunch too because they're they've been so entertaining to knit with it. So if I have to knit with it again it's sweat off my back so so yeah I just wanted to show you kind of my little setup up here and uh, yeah I think I'm going to do just a little bit more of a do a vlog sort of style recording this time where I'm you know showing you things as I do them and stuff. I took some footage yesterday of them spinning but I might just do that this time. That's how I'll fill up my 15 minutes. Instead of just sitting in one place and talking. It might be fun to do a more a few little shots or something. Okay. So I made a little unboxing video for you. I sent this kit off to Nicole from the Gentle Knitter podcast and I thought I would show you what it looked like because this is what you can expect from all my hand spun kits. So I sewed a little project bag, storage bag out of some cotton I had in my stash and these are the 250 gram skeins that you get with a set of coordinating semi-precious stitch markers. And I've got a little skein for swatching there. I know some of us like to swatch. And I included a little spot for you to stick it into your knitting journal if you're also the type that likes to do that sort of thing.
And these are some tags that I just made with some stamps I found at the thrift shop just to write more info down about where things are from and such. And this is like a little texture card so you could get a sense of what the wools felt like on their own. And lavender because I love me some lavender. I'm really glad that Nicole is liking the kit. It's really exciting for me. I had some people ask me on Instagram if I would put together some spinning fiber kits so that they could make their own hidden gem shawl. So there's some elements that are the same. You get a little tag for your spinning journal and I've kind of bundled up the dyed fiber together and put things into these skeins. And there's of course some more lavender for you where I've put the stitch markers. Okay, take my last sip of cocoa before. I get going because it's going to be a long one today. Hi, I'm Lindsay. Welcome to my little YouTube journal thing. I call it quarter past because I felt like the sweet spot for me with filming was about 15 minutes before I started to poop out a little bit and wanted to get back to crafting. But in this case, there's been a backlog of crafts lately because I've been crafting for stress relief so I've been busy <laughs> and I want to get things recorded when I can there just hasn't been a lot of opportunity and now there is and so I'm gonna take advantage of it so it's not gonna be 15 minutes today this is gonna be it's my day off I'm taking it easy I'm talking about wool because that's what makes me happy so I'm going to start off with talking about my knitting. Again, I do a lot of spinning of wool, so I'm lately knitting with a lot of hand spun as well. So I think all my projects are hand spun related this time around. And yeah, I've been having a ball. So I'll start off with something that is taking its sweet, sweet time to be finished. But that's the case with just about everything these days. And it's great because I'm working with some walls that I could take a long time doing and being very happy doing that. <laughs> so this is with some fleece or some roving that I got from Cranog Ales. This is a CVM Rommeldale named Mate Pie and this was her very first fleece. So I am on to a little, the little section of detail that I have here. You'll recognize this uh, mosaic stitch. I'm, I have a, a thing for it. I like it. I think it's pretty. And I just like simple straight lines a lot of the time right now. And so I wanted to do a more subtle stripe. So these two yarns, they don't have much contrast at all, really. So this one's a bit more on the paler side, whereas this one is it's a more moret sort of brown. So this is paler gray. This has got more brownie shades in it. And I, I, I very much love this color of wool. It's just the right mixture between brown and gray. And it's just so versatile. So when this mosaic section is all said and done it's gonna sit more just offset and I decided to try and use up just all of the little gray bit of gray that I had left and so I'm gonna just do a little stripe section with it right here and see how I like that. I'm very much into the idea of using up as much of the hand spun as possible but I also found a little project that I really like making with the little bits of hand spun that I have over left over which isn't usually very much but I can get by with just a little bit of this so I am gonna keep moving on with shawls and then I'll come back and show you those little projects with those little leftovers so this one's still on the needles but it's just about off this was a shawl that I showed the recording last time of so it's one of the micro stripe shawls I've done and 
it's got this section here where I did some more of that mosaic. So this is some wool from Lone Sequoia Ranch. I have some CVM alpaca from that darn yarn shop and fiber mill and from West Coast Color in here too. That's the dyed stuff. So this is on the bluesy sides. It's got some blue silk running through it too. So it's and just little bits of gold and it's just it's so hard to pick up all the tiny little changes that are in hand spun you know it really does kind of have this shimmery effect because there's just all these little blips of color here and there poking through and yeah so you can see a little bit better about how what I mean by the offset slightly offset look of the I'm just gonna like try and not have this fall off the nails <laughs> of the mosaic pattern I always kind of fold this down whenever I wear these so that it you just get a lot of coverage right up at your neck but it's got yeah just it's just kind of like that and this is a shawl you can very much kind of have draped over one shoulder or you can tie it up kind of more snugly around and really cozy up into it around the neck So, just loving working on this. I, I did go back and fix this center section right here. I wanted to just have that main color carry solidly through as before it looked kind of like jaggedy and I hadn't quite figured it out, but now I realize all I have to do is cross one stitch over the other and that will keep the, the decreases lined up properly. So. I put together a little shawl pattern for this shawl shape. It's just explaining the decreases and increases to make this kite shape shawl. So I came across this shape for the first time when I knit the Mirinda pattern by Amber O'Brien. I loved that pattern so much. I made so many of them with commercial yarn, with hand spun yarn for my sister, for my mom. Um, actually, no, my sister, she knit her her own but my, I think my aunt has one and my mom has one for sure and I I just think it's a splendid versatile shape it's very easy to wear and I wrote up the increases and the decreases for it thinking okay well you know I know that I originally came across this in a pattern but I'm not I'm no longer following any of the pattern stitch counts not not doing the way she did her patterning or her striping I'm kind of doing my own thing now at this point and so I talked to a designer because I wanted to include this as a part of a little freebie of the kits that I've been selling and want to sell and I just didn't know I'm like I don't I don't want to you know step on any toes or rob the glory from anyone else but because I'm doing my own stitch count and I'm adding my own elements I am just it's fine to add that just the increases and the, the decreases I am going to do a, a more patterny pattern, which will include this mosaic section, just explaining how I did it. And I, I'm kind of just a fly by the seat of your pants person. So I, I really just figure out things as I go. And I, to a degree, I don't care if things don't line up just, just so. So sometimes my edges, I'll just let you see. I don't think that looks bad. <laughs> right this one is even a bit more imprecise but I don't know there's nothing about it that bugs me so I, I just have a little bit of hesitation of calling it a pattern you know even I, I like calling it a recipe because it's kind of just giving you the idea of how I went about it and it doesn't lay it out in this wonderful way the way Amba O'Brien did in her pattern so but it's all cool. I can add it. I'm not going to mess with any copyrights or anything just by explaining the kite shape to people and how to make that. Because nobody has monopolies really on shawl shapes necessarily unless it's completely innovative like Stephen West does come up with his brand new shawl shapes, things like that. But something that's just quite straightforward is this. I think it's, I hope it's okay. So now I can show you a finished one of those kite shaped shawls and this one's quite large 
So here we are. So you see, you can see that you start down here at this tip and then you work your way up and you do even increases with some spine decreases until you get to this point right here. And so it creates a longer, shallow shape, triangle shape shell. And here we are. And I'm probably just gonna leave this on for the rest of this thing, because it's so nice. So the wool in this one, it's got from some undyed Romney mohair from Disdero Ranch, which is lovely. The mohair and the Romney, it gives just the littlest littlest bit of that kind of mohair halo, but also has that toothy texture that Romney can have. And of course, because I've plied them with much finer wools like Polworth and there's silk in there and Targi, it, it's got a great hand, right? It's, it's soft. I don't feel any prickle factor, though I do feel a wooly texture. It's not slippery soft the way that Merinos can be. But I like that. I like that it's not, it's not what I'm used to anymore at this point. So this was another one of the micro stripe ones that I did. Same thing with this one. Sorry, I've had to record this one time over and so I kind of get mixed up about what I've said or not. But with the micro stripe, what I've done is for one of the skeins I plied with a dark gray. With one of the skeins I dyed it, or plied it with a, a lighter gray. So it would create just a little bit more dimension and yeah so it you can see you can tuck all the ends pretty easily safely up under there and then it just sits and it stays there <laughs> and I really just I appreciate that very much in a shawl so this is yeah West Coast color again and what was the other ply I did in here Oh, I think this is, again, this is Lone Sequoia Ranch, her Jacob Shetland as well, the same. That's this dark, dark charcoal. And, yeah, so, oh, just about to skip my little, my little how to use up scrappies of hand spun project. So here, I've got this little bit of hand spun. Now I confess with this one, wasn't a scrap. I had some roving that I had gotten from Fiber and Forge, excuse me, and it was some Gotland in this dark, dark charcoal. And I had a, just a little bit of some, this was some leftovers from an, another spin, so I applied them all together because a friend of ours is having a baby <laughs> and I wanted to make just a little something for their new child and I decided I was going to make a little family of doggos. <laughs> so this one here is made all with hand spun and you can see I put, oh there we go, some I'll brush alpaca silk on there for the ears just to make them a little more fuzzy and this is the little baby. And who's got fluffy ears? Yeah, fluffy ears and fluffy toes. <laughs> so, Mama's still getting her her leg put on, but they're just slightly different <laughs> in color. So one is just a little bit darker than the other, and. I knit the baby one on with some fingering weight just on a tighter gauge and this is the wrap me up toy pattern by Susan B. Anderson. Love how she instructs toy knitting. It's not it doesn't feel fiddly because you don't have to sew on any little bits after you don't have to seam anything up. And I think they're just really precious. So yeah, they're just about just about there. I think actually I have one more hand spun knitting project to show and I'm gonna I'm gonna do this and then I think I'm gonna have to take a little break and actually 
feeling that 15 minute mark coming up with the filming. <laughs> so bizarre. Anyway, I'll get to the big pile of hand spun that I've done and I want to show you some of the wools that have come into my stash. And also, <laughs> um, I recently got access to a drum carter and so there are bats that I have been making and spinning with and I want to show how that's all been working out too. So just one more thing for knitting. This is a little cowl that I'm making. And this is with some wool. It's, you know, I'm sorry, my I'm doing my best with the lighting that I have. This is some wool that I washed from the fleece and just flicked open the locks and spun them straight from there. And so this was a fleece that I picked up at the Lower Mainland Sheep Producers Association. It was, I think it won second or third in its category for colored long wools. So it's a Gotland Rom Romney Charlotte. Somebody tell me how to pronounce that sheep name. Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlos. <laughs> I love the fiber though and this it is it feels on the finer side but at the same time spinning it it wanted to be spun just so thin and it has this very light uh, halo to it because I'm spinning kind of everything on a more woolen style woolen style spinning and yeah, I'm liking that it has this very, very subtle color shifts, and there's a ball all wound up. Yeah, so it's this chocolate brown with this shimmery bits of gray kind of throughout it, so brownie gray. So, yep, I'm just doing, it's going to be a little triangle shaped cowl like this. I think it's going to be a Christmas gift. We'll see. I, yeah, like it. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. I will be back in a little bit. Just going to take a little break and do a couple things and then, yeah, keep up the enthusiasm while I'm on the camera. Yeah, just lost my steam, I guess. <laughs> so that's it for me today. Thanks so much for watching and for following along with my crafting. It's been really fun to do this with you all. <laughs>